Hundreds of world leaders, billionaires and celebrities have been caught out using questionable financial practices in order to conceal their wealth. Millions of leaked documents have revealed the extent to which some of the world's most influential people have used offshore accounts to avoid paying taxes. The data drop, known as the Pandora Papers, has left many of the rich and powerful with lots of explaining to do. Melinda Nusifora has more. It's the largest treasure trove of leaked financial data ever exposed. It's being branded the Pandora Papers, and it's lifted the lid on the shadowy world of international finance. Journalists sifted through more than 6.4 million documents, nearly 3 million images, over 1.2 million emails and half a million spreadsheets. Tax evasion and aggressive tax planning is completely unacceptable. And we have in the European Union some of the highest tax transparency standards in the world. But as we see, it's not enough. More work is needed. The hall revealed that more than 400 of the world's richest and most influential individuals have set up companies or trusts in lightly taxed countries to hide the extent of their wealth. And in many cases, that means they avoid paying taxes. Among those implicated are members of the Pakistani Prime Minister Imran Khan's inner circle, including ministers and military elites. The Prime Minister has ordered an investigation into the allegations. Jordan's long ruling monarch King Abdullah II was found to have funneled over $100 million through secret companies to buy luxury homes in the US and the UK but he's denied any impropriety. In Kenya, the papers reveal the president's family has been secretly amassing assets worth more than $30 million, hidden in tax havens, including Panama. And the Czech Republic's prime minister, Andrej Babis, has allegedly moved $22 million through offshore companies to secretly buy a lavish estate on the French Riviera. Babis is facing an election later this week and has questioned the timing of the revelations. This thing is from 2009, so the timing is quite interesting. The practices exposed in the papers aren't illegal, but they are morally questionable, especially at a time when the COVID-19 pandemic has exacerbated the divide between rich and poor. Melinda Nusifora, TRT World. For more on the Pandora Papers, we're joined now by Sheila Alecci, who's a senior reporter at the International Consortium of Investigative Journalists. She joins us now from Washington, D.C. Welcome to the program, Sheila. The ICIJ has described this investigation as the biggest journalism partnership in history involving almost 12 million leaked documents. Explain to us how you managed to gather all that evidence that formed this expose. Mm -hmm. Sure, ICIJ has received these documents from an anonymous source and we have uh, uh, been working on this for uh, about two years. Um, I, I was one of the first reporters who uh, started looking into this data um, last year uh, before the pandemic actually. And um, as we started, we, we, we saw that there were a lot of names, of international names, of many political figures. And so um, ICIJ has an expertise in doing this kind of international global investigations. And we um, decided to create a, immediately an international team of reporters to help us dig through these files. And um, as you saw the result, um, we found more than 300 uh, politicians, including former and current um, country leaders and uh, billionaires from many countries and uh, pop stars, for sports stars and so forth. And obviously in order to dig through this um, uh, um, enormous uh, um, amount of data, we needed also a cross-border and a big um, team. And that's what we did. And uh, eventually it grew, so it grew to become uh, a team of uh, 600 um, reporters from more than 100 countries. Incredible. Uh, as well as the more than 330 politicians and public officials that you mentioned, the Pandora Papers implicate some 35 current and former world leaders, as well as celebrities from around 91 countries. Unfortunately, we don't have enough time to go through all of them. Can you point, us, uh, point out to us, though, which figures really stood out in your research? 
I think the most interesting figures are the ones who publicly um, spoke out against tax evasion in the past and promised their own citizens and voters to uh, increase transparency, including uh, the president of Kenya, the prime minister of Czech Republic. And uh, we see that as they were doing that publicly, actually they were using the offshore system to create shell companies and other um, secretive um, vehicles to um, hide their wealth from their own um, citizens, um, from the public scrutiny. And obviously we do not, uh, we want to say that um, having an offshore company doesn't mean that a person has done anything illegal, but the very fact that these political figures hide this, um, this fact from their own uh, citizens, citizens is worth not noticing because it may create a conflict of interest. Yes, and as your papers show, uh, this vast network of offshore accounts is used by these people to dodge literally billions in tax liabilities uh, back in their home countries. Uh, what are you hoping to achieve from this investigation and the other similar exposés that, that you've put together? Yes, in the past, um, you may remember the Panama Papers that was based on uh, the information from one single provider. In this case, we have information coming from more than 14 different providers. So we really are able to see in this case the complexity of the whole system, the, the, of the, the financial, the offshore financial system. And um, even though there have been some reforms in some countries, um, we think um, there are still, there's still room for um, increasing transparency and having public registry, for example public registries, for example, and also holding accountable those countries like the United States that have become um, one of the major players in this offshore system recently. Okay, Sheila Alecci from the International Consortium of Investigative Journalists. We'll have to leave it there, but thank you so much again for joining us on Money Talks.